telling you, that company is behind the engine that we see right here, and we kind of know this airplane engine as the O200. But there's some letters that follow that that identify more what you had and what you've now got that applies to the light port world. Tell us the A and the D suffixes and what those right. mean. That's correct. The, the O200A that we're all familiar with was the engine that for certain a lot of years powered the 150 Cessna, so it was very popular. When the light sports came along, certainly we wanted to try to get into that business. And the, the engine, the O200A, the horsepower range was good, but the weight was just It's always bit. been 100 horsepower, right? Well, well, we'll say it was 100 horsepower, but if you really went and dyno the engine, truly at that, that configuration, it was probably 97 or so. I see, okay. So and that's one thing that the O200D did, is we had, to, we had to go to that 100 horsepower rating. Cessna actually wanted that for the Skycatcher, so. But we had to go in and, and lighten the engine and make some modifications to get the 100 horsepower. So that's what became the O200D that we have on the stand today. Now the D model that you are now promoting for the light sport aircraft community and those producers, you really were given a lot of the impetus for that by Cessna with a, a lot of orders in the book and they uh, they elected this engine or the or the O200 engine, and, but they said, look, what can you do for us and uh, lighten it up some more and do some other things. What kind of stuff do you do to lighten up the engine? Well, absolutely, and the backup they did, they did help drive the development of the engine, because certainly we're in the engine manufacturing business, and we have to sell products, so we have to have some kind of driving force to, to go through the engineering and the expense to do that. And so what we did with the O200D, we had to go in and look at areas that we could take material out to make the engine lighter. And so we had to do a lot of engineering analysis. You could see clearly in the front here, you could see the crankshaft, flange for the propeller is much different so you can visibly see that. Would this be a disc on the other right. one? That would be a solid disc. Okay, so here's one place thing. where you got rid of some weight. That's right, correct. Okay. Uh, you know, and then hollow, hollow the crankshaft, hollow the camshaft. Um, some well, things are pretty big deal. They are, and yeah. things you can't see visibly, but during that process you have to do a lot of stress analysis because we always all know that the old O200, all the small series Continentals were very reliable. Yeah, very I think they'd run forever. Yeah, they'd run forever. You put so you take weight out you got to make sure they'll still you run you got to make sure, so there's a lot of engineering that has to take place. So we did a lot of that stuff with, uh, with uh, in-house design testing, uh, you know, testing the engine, testing the components. We do a lot of strain gauge type work when we test the crankshafts and different components. Um, now you're doing your own in-house machining, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we, so like, is well, everything I see here made in-house? Yeah, if you were to come to Continental, you would see this crankcase. It comes in as a raw casting. So this is a raw casting. The steel components are forging. Cast elsewhere, and then you go in and machine the interior They come in a raw form, and we okay. do all the final machining there in, in the mobile the factory. So, but again, uh, externally the crankshaft, the tapered fin on the cylinders, which actually derives from the five. The black part here that we're looking at. Yeah, and you see the fins are tapered; they're not straight. Um, whenever we did the 550, there was a lot of analysis done years ago that realized that we didn't build as much temperature in the lower end of the bore, so we could take material out. Uh -huh. In the big bores, that was about seven pounds. Not as much here, but we were we were after ounces. Yes, right. To get, to get pounds, so that's some of the things you see. So the tapering I see is this way Absolutely. on that cylinder. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You know, the, at the base of the cylinder, these fins are much shorter. They're much taller up near the top of the combustion. Uh -huh, area. So, uh -huh. Yes, definitely. Where the where the main heat is. That's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. We generate most of the heat. We generate most of the power in the, in the power stroke. So besides cylinders. What in the back of the engine might have yeah. changed too? Right? Well, back in the accessory areas, you can see that we went to a lightweight starter. This is a SkyTech starter, lightweight component. Um, the O200D actually has a little small oil filter that you wouldn't normally see on the O200A. Um, in the alternator drive area here, this just has a block off plate, but you can order the engine, it can come in with a lightweight alternator. It's uh, actually okay. a plain power lightweight alternator instead of the standard alternator that we used to provide. Uh, one thing in the ignition area. Uh, I, I think everybody is aware that Continental Motors builds our own ignition system. You know, we, we bought the Bendix product line 22, 23 years ago, so we manufacture those in-house. But we install Slick Mag on the O200D for weight savings. You know, the Bendix Mag is very robust, heavier, so slick ignition system for lightweight on the engine. And we did do some automotive ignition testing, but went back to the reliability, regular aircraft ignition on the engine. So let's bring it down to the bottom line, Ron. Difference in weight, and you can be approximate on this yeah. if you don't have the exact numbers on your hand, on your tip of your tongue, uh, between the A and the D. In other words, how much did we cut out in order to yeah. make it a light sport engine? Roughly 28, 29 pounds. This, this engine, as you see it now, is 199 pounds. 
Okay, so that's the, that's the weight of this now. So again, now, does that include, for example, exhaust and whatever? No, no, that's, that's the basic engine okay, you see Okay, that's what we're seeing right here. What you're seeing right here, and, and you can see the sump is one thing. We didn't really talk about this as an aluminum fabricated sump. Oh, okay. So we're all familiar with the old steel kidney. So okay. That was an area that we... There's some more pounds down, or yeah. ounces anyway down there. Started with ounces and then pounds, even like accessory covers that we didn't look at, the, the old block off plate. It's a piece of machine billet that's much thinner, has strength ribs in it, but it's machine lighter to get out again to, to finally get us to the pound that we had to, had to reduce them. To keep the durability and the reliability that we've had for years, that's probably where the weight had to stop. Sure. So the Bendix line acquisition you said was 20 some years ago, but the company's got a lot of history. How, how long have you been around? Yeah, yeah much older. You know, Continental Motors itself, much over 100 years old. You know, in the aviation business, much over 80, 80 years old in manufacturing aviation engines. Well, given the Skycatcher and some of the other airplanes, these are pretty commonly used in flight schools. Absolutely. And yeah. what kind of time between overhaul or TBO do you have on this engine, the O200D? Yeah, well, now with the O200D, it's 2,000 hour TBO, but the, but the flight schools and those operators that operate more hours a month, they certainly have the availability within our TBO that they can add a couple of hundred hours. So, so they, they can get, get to 2,200. That's right. If you're using it regularly. That's correct. That's and correct. that's the key. That is, yeah. Constant usage is the key for good life. Well, I believe you that you've done a good job of making the engine a reliable, long-running engine because we know they're out there running for a long time. Yeah. But eventually they all need service. You can get a Continental engine service a lot of places, and I don't mean your factory-approved ones that probably can do the real heavy maintenance, but the guys that can do the main routine maintenance. Yeah, any, any shop, any FEO, A and P, because again, this is just a basic Continental engine that we've been manufacturing for all these years. And under an a and license, they have the, uh, the capability and the ratings to do all the service work on this engine. Even actually out and do a field overhaul on this engine. You know, an a and can do that. Okay. It's just like that. Well, I'm guessing that in 100 years, you've developed quite a global presence to the company. Absolutely. Uh, I know in the United States, you go anywhere, you get a Continental engine work done. No problem. Right, right. right. How true is that around the world? Well, and, and, and through the years, it's been pretty good around the world because of the aircraft that Continental has powered through the years. You know, we've used those aircraft around the globe, but, but in recent times, through acquisitions, uh, as we all know now, we've acquired the Centurion Company that's a diesel engine. I want it to come has, back to that in a minute. Okay, yeah, it has a location in Germany. Okay. Uh, we, we currently put locations in China. You know, China's starting to open up their market, so we're putting locations over there to supply parts to them. So certainly, we, we've had a global... Um, uh, I guess coverage for years, but now with the, with the financial uh, wealth of the company, acquisition of these other companies, and, and the staff that comes along with that, the global presence has really, really grown. So Continental really has grown quite a bit in just the last few years. This I year. would say the last few years, and even the last year, has been a, a big growth spurt due to the acquisition of Centurion. Well, speaking, you mentioned Centurion. It's not a light sport thing right, yet. Correct. Maybe it will be later, but we've got four seaters coming from some of our light sport producers. Uh, we don't want to go into too much detail yeah. on it, but tell me a little bit about the good news of the diesel engine. Right, right. And, a lot, and a lot of great interest. And like you said, there are some LSA manufacturers that are looking to get into larger aircraft, and they're certainly looking at the diesel engine due to their global presence. So. Most places in the world, I'll yeah. add, don't always have abgas. Right, and when they do have it, it's very expensive. Yeah. It is banned in a lot of regions in the world. so. But Again, diesel's the, everywhere. Yeah, and, and diesel, we're going to say Jet A. You know, Jet A is available everywhere, and that's what these engines will operate on. Diesel on emergency, but they operate on Jet A. And so we've got a whole family of those that are uh, going all the way through the horsepower range. It's all through the, you know, light aircraft as we know them today, uh, the, the current line of aircraft that our engines operate in. Well, we'll come back and hear more about the Centurion diesel engine from Continental Motors in a future video. For now, we want to say, Look, we asked you a bunch of questions. I hope there were some good ones that were of interest to our viewers. Uh, there's a lot more to ask, and then if they're actually building an airplane, which many of our viewers do as well, or the manufacturers, uh, where do they go to find you on the web? And from there, they can find out all the other information they need about content. Yeah, the place to start is Continental Motors, and it's continentalmotors.aero, and you go to the website, and you can just segue from there to, to every uh, facet of Continental Motors. And there's a whole segment on there about experimental, too, I know. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Uh, slash experimental, and you get even more stuff. That's right. Yeah. Well, thanks for talking with us today, Ron. Uh, we are reporting here from the Sebring Air Show. We'll look to hear more from Continental Motors down the road, but we thank you for all your years of making uh, great engines for our airplanes. And I'm Dan Johnson. You can find out more about Continental Motors and lots of airplanes 
on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us here today.